Next up is energy stored in a magnetic field. Now, you may remember that a capacitor, uh, it's really not storing charge because what's the net charge in a capacitor? Zero. zero. No matter how much charge is on it, it's this negative and positive. So it's really net uh, charge of zero on a capacitor. So it's probably more correct to say a capacitor stores energy. We can look at that capacitor's energy, which is one half Q delta V, as the energy stored in the electric field. Similarly, we can call the, in the energy stored in an inductor the energy stored in a magnetic field. And uh, without uh, the derivation, I'm just going to give you this. Uh, the, uh, what happens here is this. When you get this, we got a resistor here. Some energy is converted to heat, but we've got some energy is in the magnetic field right here of this thing. There's energy stored in that inductor when you have current in it. And how can you prove that? Well, if you just try to stop the current, it will, if you, if you just basically disconnect your, your source EMF, the current will keep going. It does not want to stop. It'll keep going. And that's only possible if you've got energy in that coil. It must be stored in the magnetic field. You open the switch, the current keeps going if you give it a path to keep going. Um, so there is energy stored in the inductor, and it's stored in the magnetic field. Uh, if the magnetic flux is decreasing, it creates an EMF, causing that current to continue. Now, U is our symbol for potential energy. The potential energy stored in an inductor is this. It is one-half L, the inductance of that coil, times I squared. You can compare that to this. It looks very analogous to one-half the capacitance times delta V squared across the capacitance. Notice that a capacitor has uh, energy stored in it if there's a voltage difference across it. A inductor has energy if there's a current traveling through it. So we have a very similar thing. Let's go ahead and derive the equation for the energy stored in an inductor. That energy is stored in the magnetic field but we can very, very easily get an equation for the energy stored and its potential energy for the potential energy stored in an inductor when there's current I going through it. And of course, there's only a magnetic field when there is a current going through it. So you might suspect that the energy is somehow related to the current I. It is. Let's go ahead and figure this out. Now what we have here is a simple RL circuit. This is EMF E right here. I'm going to just label that the positive side and the negative side. And this is an inductor L over here. See that? And at time equals zero, we're going to close that switch. Boom, right there, we've got now a complete circuit. Now, an inductor is something that hates changes in current. It wants current just to stay the same. Just keep whatever it's doing, do that. And you'll notice that time equals zero, before we close that switch, what was the current? It was zero. So this inductor well, wishes the current would just stay at zero. So you can ask yourself, which way will this inductor over here be polarized? In other words, which way would this thing be pushing to try to keep the current right where it was at zero? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to label it the way that it's pushing, just like a battery pushing, it's pushing this way, positive this side and a negative this side. It's pushing against the EMF of the battery. That's why we call it a back EMF. It's always pushing against any changes in current. And because I'm just closing this switch right here, the battery's pushing current this way. In fact, I'm going to label the current going this way. I is this way. And this is like, no, I don't want the current to change, so it's going to push back. And how hard it pushes back depends on the rate of change of current. Let's see if we can just do a little bit of math here to do some derivation. Now, as you might guess, I've got an EMF here, I've got a current I, and I've got a resistor R and an inductor of inductance L. What equation am I going to use to try to derive this energy stored? And we're almost always using this. It is the Kirchhoff's loop rule. So the loop rule, and there's only one, there's only one loop here. 
I'm going to start right here. And then I'm going to jump over to this point right there. When we jump from there to there, you might ask, are we going up or down a hill? We're going up in energy, so it's positive E. And then this current, we're assuming it's going that way, which it is going to be, going through our resistor, and let's trace it from there to there as we can continue going around our loop clockwise. I'll add that clockwise. And from there to there, are we gaining or losing energy? Well, the potential energy turns into thermal energy, which is now dissipated. So it's going to be minus IR. And how about when we go from here to there? Now, it's always a back EMF. You'll notice that because this thing is pushing against the changing current, it's going to be pushing kind of back this way. It wants, it's going to push that way. Uh, so this is going to be a back EMF, meaning it is going to be higher potential here than here. It's like a hill that is pushing back the other way. So it is actually going to be pushing in a negative way. That's why they call it a back EMF, negative L, D-I-D-T. And it will always be opposing DIDT. So it's always going to be negative DIDT, even if this uh, current is already going and it wants to stop the change, it wants, wants to keep it going, in other words. So it's always negative of the L DIDT. And if DIDT is negative, then this will be a positive. But we're going to keep it like this. And because of the loop rule, that brings us back around to here. We're now back where we started, so this all equals zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by I. And this will give me EI minus I squared R minus LI DI DT equals zero. I'm going to rearrange this slightly to be like this. Now this equation actually makes a lot of sense because EI, this is the voltage across the battery times the current through the battery. This is the power delivered by the battery. And so that's like some number of joules per second that's being provided by this battery. It's got to go somewhere. Now that is all equal to the sum of two other powers. This is the power which is dissipated by the resistor. In other words, that is the rate of energy being converted into thermal energy. It just goes away into the atmosphere. Well, what the heck is this? This is the power which is stored in the inductor. It's being stored in there. As this current increases, you can see as I increases, more and more energy per unit time is stored in the inductor. The power stored in the inductor is LIDIDT. So this is just conservation of energy here. The, the, the battery delivers all this power. Some of it gets dissipated, some of it gets stored. And if you just integrate that by time, you could have the energy delivered, the energy dissipated, and the energy stored. Uh, in fact, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take, we're only going to look at this last term. So this means that right here, we've identified that as this is the power stored in the inductor. That is the rate of change of the energy, the potential energy that's stored, du dt inductor. And that is equal to, as we just said, Li times the rate of change of current, di dt. So the rate of uh, energy being stored in the inductor, and u is potential energy, you could think of it as being stored in the magnetic field, is just L times I times di dt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of this dt here. Cancel, cancel, I can do that to both sides. So this means that du 
where U is the potential energy stored in the inductor equals L I D I. And sure enough, it's fair to integrate both sides. Well, when we start, the current is equal to what when we first start this thing? Current is equal to zero. And when we get to some arbitrary i, we're just going to say, well, i is just some arbitrary i. You can, you can do that. It's a, a fairly common notation to say i equals some arbitrary i. And then all we got to do then is this will be the entire energy stored as we integrate du, add up all the infinitesimal energy stored. And when we do that, we get the u stored in the inductor is equal to one half L I squared. There it is right there. Uh, for the coil, uh, we're going to derive what the energy per unit volume is. Uh, all you got to do is substitute our equation for our inductance of a coil. In order just to save time here, we're not going to derive it, but this is the uh, energy stored in an inductor right here. B squared, magnetic field squared, times the volume over 2 mu naught. So here's what we get. Uh, the energy per unit volume stored in inductor is B squared over 2 mu naught.